Well, it is the time of the night for the Lifetime Achievement Award. And boy, this is going to be exciting because there are going to be two of the funniest people that Canada has ever produced. And I'm not talking about Elwood Glover. He will not be here. <laughs> is Christopher Plummer laughing? <laughs> Did a joke for one person. So now, how exciting is this? As we are going to witness, Levy present a candy to Short. Eugene Levy, everybody. <laughs> Well, it is indeed an honor for me tonight to be presenting the CSA Lifetime Achievement Award to my oldest and dearest friend, Marty Short. As its name, please. As its name implies, this award recognizes a lifetime of exceptional work, years and years and years and years and years of it. It's an award that sugarcoats a cold, hard fact. When you reach a ripe old age, as is the case with my dear friend Marty, <laughs> you can look back on your career and know that just because you're too old to do it anymore, you now have a beautiful trophy that you can hold in your hand and say to yourself, what a career I had and what a shame it's over. And it's certainly fortunate for all of us tonight that uh, my good friend Marty is touch wood in, uh, despite his age and good health, and <laughs> physically able to be here tonight to uh, <laughs> accept this very prestigious award, the Lifetime Achievement Award. You know, when I met Marty back in Hamilton at McMaster University in 1970, frankly, I was shocked he wasn't gay. <laughs> No other 22-year-old male was doing a drop-dead impersonation of Catherine Hepburn opining the fragrance of calla lilies. <laughs> or doing Elizabeth Taylor just ordering a pizza. Or a pitch-perfect Betty Davis, uh, you know, just to pepper a conversation. Or using the entire floor to glide into a Sonia Henney impersonation. 1936 Norwegian figure skating champion Sonia Henney. This was so not Hamilton to me. <laughs> Marty was still writing his finals at McMaster in 1972 when I told him to come out and audition for the Toronto production of Godspell, which he did and which he got. And that was the beginning of Marty Short in show business that did not take place in his attic with a tape recorder. <laughs> his early career here in Toronto was fully enveloped in musical theater. Before he discovered the Second City, where his most famous nerd with a point, Ed Grimley, would be created. <laughs> Marty rolled in and out of musical productions like they were water, each one of these shows in the 1970s becoming a rung on the ladder that would eventually take him to impressive heights, like becoming the toast of Broadway 21 years later winning a Tony Award and a Drama Desk nomination for The Goodbye Girl, a Tony nomination and a Drama Desk nomination for Little Me, and a Drama Desk nomination for his own Broadway creation, Martin Short, Fame Becomes Me. Honestly, if you haven't seen Marty on a Broadway stage, you haven't seen anything. In television, after working with Marty for two insanely fun-filled seasons on SCTV in 1983 and 84, where he created two characters that could only have come out of his head, the incomparable Jackie Rogers, Jr. <laughs> and the incomprehensible Lawrence Orbach. He was tapped to do Saturday Night Live in 1985, and it was there in that pressure cooker on a national stage doing live comedy every week that Marty's career really took off. He became a household name, and Ed Grimley and Nathan Thurm became national obsessions. A few years later, he would again hit the airwaves with the Martin Short Show, and my all-time favorite half hour in the history of television, primetime Glick. He 
And while all this was going on, he still managed to squeeze in a few iconic feature films like Three Amigos, Father of the Bride, Clifford, Mars Attacks, and most recently, Inherent Vice, to name a few. The fact is, Marty has done it all. And I've only scratched the surface tonight. We'd be here for three days if I had to go through his IMBD. <laughs> to me, in the world of comedy, bar none, there is no mind smarter, no mind faster, and no mind funnier than Marty Short. But then again, I think he mentioned that in his book. <laughs> so why don't we all take a look at what he's been up to for the past 44 years? This room here is the makeup room, where dreams are made and images realized. I'm trying to do any dope I can't pay for is what it is. You lose money. Don't worry about that. We value your friendship. A pleasure, Tomatio. Oh, my. I mean, that's good, isn't it? You bet. Could I have another Cointreau and Sodi? Mm -hmm. And could you send an almond torta over to the gentleman in the white suit in the corner? Oh, I can't believe it's a white Christmas. I mean, it couldn't be much more perfect, I must say. Casual sex? What are you talking about? This is, this is like my best suit. This is the greatest thrill of my life. Who is she? <laughs> Men are mice. What'll it be? Because of you, every cop in the state is on my ass. What do you want me to do? Cry. I'm the kind of guy who bruises easily but heals fast. Besides providing decades of quality entertainment. How Dave lived past 60 is a miracle to me. I believe since my life began, the most I've had is just a talent to muse. Please welcome the 2016 CSA Lifetime Achievement Award recipient, Marty Short. Thank you. Uh, 
sounds so nice. Thank you very much. Just because I say thank you doesn't mean you have to stop applauding. <laughs> this is very decent, I must say. There's no question. A lifetime achievement can be. <laughs> oh, you should have. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm so utterly overwhelmed by this, and, and, and I didn't even know I was sick. Uh, <laughs> in helping me to achieve this remarkable moment in my life, there are so many people I must and should uh, thank, but the reality is I did it all myself. <laughs> No, that's not true. That's not true. Far from it. As you can imagine, uh, it is somewhat daunting to try to determine whom to acknowledge when you're basically seen your entire life presented before you, between the forceps and the stone, as the Canadian genius Joni Mitchell once put it. <laughs> and please don't worry, I'm, I'm going to keep this short because my Uber driver is waiting. <laughs> <laughs> and you know how testy Stephen Harper can get. <clears throat> First of all, uh, let me thank the heavens uh, for the family that I was born into. Uh, there was a comedic break, I'm telling you. The spectacular shorts, uh, my parents, Charles and Olive, and my hilarious siblings, David, Nora, Brian, and Michael. In fact, my brother Michael and I have written comedy together for over 30 years from SCTV on. And in fact, this year, Michael was nominated for two Canadian Screen Awards for the brilliant Shit's Creek. But, uh, <laughs> what a proud little brother I am. Let me also say that I would not be standing here tonight without the guidance, the patience, and the endless love of my three children whose names are eluding me. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes! Catherine, Oliver, and Henry. And for me, there's nothing more rewarding than getting a deep tissue massage while glancing over and seeing one of your kids getting tutored in math. <laughs> and what I admire most about my children is that they've always understood the financial upside of faking a laugh. <laughs> For as we all know, you simply must balance career and family. Unless, that is, you have an amazing, unstoppable career, and then, of course, who needs family? <laughs> They'll just get in the way. <laughs> of course, there are myriad school teachers who guided me and... Oh, who am I kidding? I paid no attention in school. Forget them. Um, I would also like to thank Miss Luba Goy, in whose winter garden dressing room I first became a man. <laughs> what tiny hands I have. <laughs> oh, M. God, Donald Trump is so right. <laughs> but here's the point. And by the way, here's the truth. For over 40 years, I've been lucky enough uh, to work with some of the greatest comedic talents imaginable. And can you imagine what it must have been like going into an office every day and working with the cast and writers of SCTV? What a privilege. What an honor. So I thank them, and particularly my dear friend Eugene Levy, who, it's true, was the one who actually convinced me in 1972, when I was still a student at McMaster University, to perhaps give this showbiz ting a try. <laughs> and last but never least, I'd like to thank my beautiful wife, Nancy. Nancy guided me on every single step of my career. And there was no one more supportive and no one wiser or funnier. Uh, 36 years of bliss makes one happy, creative fella. In fact, it was Nan on our honeymoon who came up with the expression, it's better to have loved a short than never to have loved a tall. <laughs> So to my brilliant friends and my brilliant family 
and to the Academy of Cinema and Television and to our beloved country, Canada, which I believe is the most receptive to the arts of any country in the world, I thank you so much for this great honor. This evening, the Ted Rogers Best Feature Length Documentary Award.